Big thank you to Tom Vecchio and Austin Swain for filling in for me the past couple of days while I was out of my wife's PhD graduation at a great time back in Syracuse and coming back to the the MLB DFS landscape for today to a pretty fun slate where we've got some good high-end pitching, but also a game at Coors Field where I think both sides are very stackable. So we're going to break down this 12-game main slate, let you know which of these studs I'm prioritizing, how to jam in more of those studs and get you ready for Tuesday night in MLB DFS. Welcome on into the solo shot. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire here to break down Tuesday's 12 game main slate with locks up for 7.07 p.m. Eastern for today. Just one weather note on this slate that is at Coors Field, unfortunately. There is a chance of rain tonight for the Rockies and the Reds. I think they should be good to play, which is why we'll be talking about that game in the stacking section. But I would check back on the weather for that later on to ensure it has not gotten worse between this morning and later on. We'll dive into pitching preview, Coors Field, and more in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. We are now Podcast, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, you name it, you can find us there. And while you're there, if you like what you hear, Leave us a rating and review as well. The second leg of horse racing's biggest three is here, and FanDuel is the best place to bet the Preakness stakes because right now all customers can get a no-sweat Preakness bet up to $20. That means you'll get up to $20 back if your win bet doesn't win. Bet the Preakness with America's number one sportsbook. Just visit racing.fanduel.com. For your chance to get a no-sweat Preakness bet up to $20 this Saturday. That's racing.fanduel.com. Age and residency restrictions apply. Offer valid on first win wager. Refund issued in non-withdrawable racing site credits that expires on June 12, 2023. Restrictions apply. See terms at racing.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Pitching preview for this Tuesday main slate. Clayton Kershaw comes in with the highest salary on FanDuel. His salary is $11,400, followed by Shane Bieber at 11-2. Kevin Gosman against the Yankees at 11,000 flat. Justin Verlander at 10-8. Justin Steele facing Justin Verlander at 10-4. Luis Castillo at Fenway, 10-2. Christian Javier, 10,000. Actually, Christian Javier is the one facing Justin Steele there. Bailey Ober, 98. We got Alex Cobb coming in at $9,600. Zach Wheeler at 94. Seth Lugo's salary is $9,000 with Jordan Montgomery, Wade Miley, and Domingo Herman as the others at $8,000 or higher. Now on this slate, we got Clayton Kershaw and Clayton Kershaw had his mother pass away this weekend. And that's a tough time for Kershaw. It's hard to know what kind of emotions he'll be going through. And I can't, you know, account for that. And it's just a tough situation for Kershaw and his entire family for sure. But from a a baseball perspective, I just analyzed Kershaw, what he's doing with this matchup. I do think that Kershaw is a quality option for DFS, and hopefully he's in a a good headspace for today. He's facing the Twins, and the Twins have struggled against lefties to open this year. They have a 79 WRC plus against them with a 28% strikeout rate. So as it stands right now, this is a plus matchup for a lefty. And Kershaw has been pitching well this entire year. Part of that's potentially because his velocity is up, but he was good last year too, even with the lower velocity. Across eight starts, Kershaw has a 3.21 skill interactive ERA with a 29% strikeout rate and a 33% hard hit rate. Those are well above average numbers across the board. Now, Kershaw, you could maybe nitpick some single game upside because if you're paying 11-4 on a slate with Coors Field, you want to make sure you can get double-digit strikeouts. And Kershaw has not had that number yet this year, but he has hit nine strikeouts on the button three separate times, and that's despite having just three of his eight starts at home, and those three home starts happen to be the exact three where he had the nine strikeout games. I have Kershaw projected for 7.9 strikeouts tonight, I can't blame him if he struggles, given all that he's going through right now. So from a human perspective, I cannot be mad if this doesn't go well. But just from a numbers perspective, Kershaw is a good play. So a lot of uncertainty here just because he is dealing with a lot. But from a baseball perspective, I hope he does well. And from a human perspective, I hope he pitches well also. I don't hate the idea of saving a bit of salary for tonight in DFS. I'm not going to jump all the way down and ignore all the 
studs we have, we can still get a stud while spending a bit less than Kershaw's salary at 11-4. Christian Javier is 10,000. Zach Wheeler is 94. And both those guys are pretty intriguing. I'm going to talk Wheeler here, but I would give some thought to Javier as well. Wheeler facing the Giants. They're a good team to face if you're looking for strikeouts. 23.7% against righties. And that's a welcome sight for Wheeler. He's had a lot of low strikeout matchups recently. This matchup against the Giants will be the first time since April 12th that Wheeler has faced a team inside the top 10 in strikeout rate against righties. Even with a lot of low strikeout matches, Wheeler has still been great. He has gotten seven plus strikeouts and three of five stars since that time, including 11 strikeouts and one. He is on the road tonight, does, as most pitchers, get downgraded a bit on the road but not a huge issue for him. Pretty similar strikeout splits for him both last year and this year, home versus road. And Wheeler will go super deep into games. I haven't projected for 103 pitches tonight. That's the highest number on the slate. That's enough for Wheeler's strikeout projection to be 6.9. It's not as high as Kershaw or even Kevin Gossman, who has the highest strikeout projection for tonight for me, but it is high enough to be worthwhile at 94. So I don't mind. Um, a route where you decide to forego Kershaw at the high salary to save some money, get down to Wheeler. I think that is a fine route. Christian Javier again in that consideration as well for the value play for today. I'm going to go back to doing Domingo Armand. We've done this a couple of times and hasn't really worked out just yet, but he's getting strikeouts and that's kind of the building block for upside in DFS. It's enough to make him a consideration. Uh, Herman is facing the Jays tonight, which is not a fun matchup. They have a 109 WRC plus against righties with a 163 ISO, not a ton of strikeouts. So the matchup is not the factor here. It's pretty purely about Herman. For the year, Herman has a 4.00 ERA. His skill interactive ERA is right there at 3.94 as well, but that's mostly due to his batted ball profile. He's letting up a 38% hard hit rate with a 43% fly ball rate, and that can get you in trouble when you're letting up that much hard contact and that many fly balls. It doesn't stop you from having upside, though. We've seen Herman have eight plus strikeouts three separate times this year. He had 11 and one. He, his face is Jay's offense once, which was back on April 21st. He was fine that game, let up four runs in six innings with six strikeouts. Nothing spectacular, but it also was not recent enough for familiarity to be a massive concern here. So, Ermond has flaws, which is why his salary is 82. It's not an elite spot, but he does enough to be in play. If I had to guess the way things would break down for today, I would bet that Jordan Montgomery catches a lot of uh, the, the heavy roster rate facing a Brewers team that has struck out a ton against lefties so far this year. But Montgomery, a much lower strikeout pitcher than Herman. So I have Montgomery projected for 5.86 strikeouts tonight versus 5.93 for Herman. And I think the roster rate gap between those two guys will be pretty big. So I don't mind Montgomery by any means, but... I think if you were trying to be different a bit, I would go towards the guy with the slightly tougher match, but the better overall stuff. And that to me is Armand. So no pushback on Montgomery, but that's the rationale for going Armand over Montgomery within the value plays for tonight. Now, the fun thing about tonight's slate is I think even if you want to go Kershaw at 11 4, you can still stack Coors Field. And a lot of that's because the salaries here are very low, especially on the Reds, which we'll talk about later on. Reds are a Coors Field facing the Rockies, and I prefer the Rockies. So we'll start things off here, but then we'll talk about the Reds next. The Rockies are facing Brandon Williamson, who will be making his debut here. It's his age 25 season, and down in AAA, the peripherals there were not great. He had a 6.18 XFIP with a 16% strikeout rate and a 12% walk rate. Williamson is not a ground ball guy. He hasn't had a ground ball rate higher than 39% since he had a six-start stretch in high A back in 2021. So the Reds kind of just need arms, and Williamson is the next one to get that crack. I'm not expecting him to be the answer here. So to me, I think the Rockies are a quality stack here given – Williamson coming up uh, on a short stint, low strikeouts, uh, you know, a lot of fly balls. I think that's enough to make the Rockies a quality stack. Now, he's a lefty, which means it's a pretty big bummer. There's no CJ Crone here, but I think there's enough guys to feel good about stacking the situation. Randall Gritchick, Chris Bryant, both good numbers against lefties in a very small sample this year. Ezekiel Tovar has cooled off, but he 
has started to hit before this little stretch. So facing the lefty here could be in play. Brenton Doyle, three homers the past couple of games, probably going to hit at the bottom of the order, but his salary is pretty low. So you can stack the Rockies with Kershaw and not feel too bad about it, especially with guys uh, like Doyle and Tovar having salaries right around $3,000. So the Rockies, I think the preferred side of this one. The Reds, though, have our savior. Their savior is Matt McClain. We'll talk about him in the uh, in a bit, in just a second. But the reason that we're on the Reds today is they're facing Chase Anderson. Anderson was actually on the Reds AAA roster earlier this year. So a quick revenge game, a uh, quick turnaround here. But the reason that he is on the Rockies, despite having pitched for the Reds earlier on, is because he was released. And it's happened twice. The Rays claimed him from the Reds, and then the Re- the Rays waived him as well. He's now starting for the Rockies. I think that tells you, A, how dire the Rockies' situation is at pitching due to all the injuries they've had, but also, B, teams have given up on Anderson pretty quickly, which means we should probably feel okay stacking against him. Anderson was struggling in AAA before his release. He had a 4.30 ERA with a 5.75 exit. He was not getting many ground balls, and he was issuing too many walks. He made two appearances to the Rays, and in in those two appearances, Anderson did not let up any runs, but again, minimal strikeouts. He had a 6.38 ERA with the Reds last year in the majors. So you combine struggles last year, struggles in AAA this year, a couple of releases, which means teams have not been super high on him. I think that gives us all the green light to go at the Reds for tonight. And I mentioned Matt McClain. He was not in the player pool last night for this game uh, for the Reds and the Rockies. He isn't there today. His salary is the minimum, not the Coors minimum of 25, but the stone minimum at $2,000. McClain hit second in that game last night, showed off his speed, had a double, scored twice, had a walk as well. And this is a guy who in AAA before his promotion had 10 stolen bases and 12 homers and hit a 362 ISO in AAA. So, You're getting that for $2,000. I know he'll be chalky. He should be the most popular player on the slate, but I'm still going to go there. So McLean to me at 2000, still a great option. Despite the popularity, it makes Kershaw easier to get to. And honestly, the rest of the reds aren't bad. You got Jonathan Indy at 4,000, but he does steal bases, does have a 147 ISO against righties. Jake Fraley power against righties salary for him. Not as bad. Spencer steer 214 ISO against righties. So You know, I I think that I would use McLean despite the fact he will be chalky because he gets you two pass to upside, a very low salary, and makes it easier to get you upside a pitcher as well. So it's chalky, but sometimes chalk is chalk for a reason. Now that's Coors Field. The second Coors Field on this slate and on every slate is getting to face the Oakland A's bullpen. They have been getting better recently but it's still an advantage to face them. And the Diamondbacks of the team in line to face Oakland for tonight. And I think that even with this game being in chilly Oakland, I do want to stack Arizona here. Arizona's facing Kyle Muller to start things off. Muller, not a huge fly ball pitcher. He has just a 32% fly ball rate allowed so far this year. Everything else though, lines up well for stacking. He has a 15% strikeout rate with an 11% walk rate. His hard hit rate allowed is 50%, and that's why his ERA is 7.34 despite getting an okay number of ground balls. Muller himself has let up four plus runs in five out of eight starts, and that's without accounting for what the bullpen allows after he comes out. Arizona, not a great team against lefties, not a team I actively seek out. In fact, I prefer pitchers against them, but... I still think we'll want to be here given the ace bullpen, given Muller, all those things aligned to make Arizona a good stack for tonight. I think with these, within these Arizona stacks, it's time to start, uh, to to start buying into Ketel Marte. His ex Woba this year is 342. It was 315 last year. So getting back to form there, his 9.8% barrel rate is a career high this year. Marte typically has been a guy who hit for more power against lefties and righties. So, If we improve his overall form, that should make him pretty great against lefties. And he gets the lefty for tonight, gets that A's bullpen after that. So I see no reason not to be high on Marte here, given his overall form is improving, 10 sit lefties well. I think that convergence makes Cattell Marte a quality play for today.
Things to watch on this Tuesday night. Mentioned Kevin Gosman has the highest strikeout projection on the slate for me. He gets the Yankees, which is still not a tough matchup, but it is tougher than it was now that Aaron Judge is back and mashing baseballs four and 60 feet. But Gosman is good. He has a high strikeout projection, slightly lower salary than Kershaw. I think he's more so a pivot. If Kershaw is going to be the runaway favorite as the among the high salary guys, I would go to Gosman. I just like Kershaw's matchup more for tonight against the Twins than instead of Gosman against the Yankees. So that's the breakdown there. If you get the sense that Gosman will be pretty low rostered, I'm fine going there and being high on him for tonight. I think the Rangers work for stacking. They're facing Jared Schuster, who... Had good results in AAA, but still not a ton of strikeouts. Not many ground balls either. Facing the Rangers, who have a 120 WRC plus against lefties, I think there's enough to go at Schuster here. So the Rangers, probably number four for stacking for me tonight, but I would say feel good about Arizona above them in that three slot. Finally, going back to Oakland, I don't mind some A's bad tonight either. They're facing Tommy Henry, who is a lefty. The A's hit lefties pretty well. I mean, you know, in a small sample, they hit at least better than they've hit righty so far. And Henry not getting many strikeouts, but it's a lot of fly balls. So it's important not to get too high in a game in Oakland, given that the temperatures there are always cooler. But I do think both sides of this game are pretty interesting. So Oakland, to me, at least a consideration for tonight. Sticking with Oakland, let's go now to our dinger calls for today. Brent Rooker facing off with a guy who doesn't get strikeouts, lets up fly balls. Rooker this year has been phenomenal, has cooled off a bit recently, but I still think he's in a good spot. So Brent Rooker, to me, the boring home run call for this dinger Tuesday. The fun home run call, got to go Matt McClain. Try to get his first career MLB home run. I know if you look at some other books, uh, the home run odds of McClain are actually shorter than guys. Um like Fraley and stuff like that, which is a little bit odd, but, um, you know, we're just kind of playing things uh, the fun way here. McLean looking for his first career big league home run. I kind of want to have that fun, both fun in like the sense that he's not super, super chalk, but also in the sense that it is a little bit more fun. McLean actually has the shortest home run odds of any Reds batter for tonight. So if you're actually trying to bet, I would say Fraley a plus five, six, he's probably the better option or steer at six to one, but for the Dinger call officially here on Dinger Tuesday, we'll go with Brett Rooker and Matt McClain. That is all that we have here for today on the Solo Shot. But coming up later on today here on the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed, we're going to break down the PGA Championship, the second major of the year for the PGA. We're going to break down guys we want each salary tier, our top options over on Vandal for today to get you ready for the PGA Championship, which tees off on Thursday. To get all that and our podcast as they go live, make sure you are subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcasts. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. I want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB DFS lineups and your Dinger bets for Dinger Tuesday. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down Wednesday's slate. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.